We're going to discuss depth of field and the depth of field preview button. I've discussed depth of field in several prior lessons, but in case you've forgotten, depth of field refers to how much of a scene is in focus in front of and behind the focal point. For example, in this shot, I'm focused on these two flowers, which happen to be in the midground of the scene. This is an example of shallow depth of field because the area in the foreground, like right there, and in the background, are out of focus. I shot this image at f4.5, which is a very large aperture setting. Larger apertures allow more light into the lens and give less depth of field than smaller apertures. Don't forget that larger sized apertures have smaller f-stop numbers, which can be confusing. Now look at the same scene shot at f22, which is a much smaller aperture. Note that the foreground and the background are all a lot crisper. Therefore, smaller apertures give greater depth of field. Keep in mind as we continue that proper exposure is determined by the aperture setting, or f-stop, which controls how much light enters the lens, and the shutter speed, which controls how long the light enters the lens. Think of the aperture as a hole in the lens, and the shutter as a door that opens and closes each time you click the shutter release button. These two factors work in tandem with each other, and every time you change one, you have to change the other to compensate. You may want to refer to Lesson 10 to review exposure. Just how important depth of field is in the grand scheme of things is apparent in this shot. I focused on the stems of this plant in the foreground with a large aperture. You can hardly make out the print back here on the wall. Here, I shot the same scene at f22, and now you can clearly see the print in the background. This is significant because if I were shooting this scene and wanted to be sure that everything is in focus, I'd have to plan my shot accordingly. I would know that using a high f-stop number, such as f22, would include the background and keep it in focus. Conversely, if I didn't want the background to be in focus because it was distracting, for example, I'd know to shoot a smaller aperture number, such as f4.5. As an artist, you want to be able to control every possible aspect of your shots that you can. If it was your intent to feature the color and texture of this plant, you'd want to keep the depth of field shallow to eliminate the distracting print on the wall, as seen here. Making decisions such as this is where the depth of field previewer comes into play. If you have a depth of field preview button on your camera, you'll be able to assess the depth of field before you even take the shot. I'll demonstrate this a little later on. Just to illustrate how critical aperture settings are to depth of field, I took this shot of the top of my wife's craft table repeatedly at 1 f-stop intervals. Note that the focal point is the bottle of red paint and it's situated in the midground of the scene with the tacky glue bottle in the foreground and the tape measure in the background. I shot this first shot at f4.5, my largest aperture setting. Keep an eye on the foreground and background as I continue to increase the aperture by one stop. Here it is at 5.6, f8, f11, f16, f22, and finally f25. At f25 you can actually read the text on the tacky glue and the text on the tape measure clearly. Whereas in the very beginning, just to go back here, just backtracking now, notice how that stuff is just a big blurry mess. One f-stop can make all the difference in the world and to what all is included in your picture. I'm now going to switch gears and show you how the depth of field preview button works. Here's my Nikon D70 uh, digital SLR and I want to illustrate how the depth of field previewer works. First thing you would do naturally was set up your scene, uh, set up your exposure, your shutter speed and your f-stop and let's just say that my f-stop was f22. So here I am at f22 I'm looking through my viewfinder and then I'm going to press this little button okay right there and this particular camera the depth of field previewer is right here under the uh, lens all right I would push this down and view my scene now when I do that it closes down the aperture it's now at f22 now I can see 
the scene. It'll be dimmer, of course, because now it's stopped down at f22. But I can see what is in focus in front of and in back of my focal point, whatever I'm focused on. If I'm happy with it, great. If I'm not, then I would close down my um, depth of field previewer. If I wanted less depth of field, okay, a little more shallower, I put the number down, maybe try 16. And of course, I would compensate for that with my shutter speed. I would go back, look through the scene again, press the depth of field preview again, close it down, look at it, and you will see, just in one f-stop, the difference. All of a sudden, those things in front of and in back of the focal point will be a little less crisp. That's how the depth of field preview button works. What I have here is an old uh, 55 millimeter micro Nikkor lens uh, that I used to use all the time with my Nikon FM2 camera. I'm using this lens because I think it will illustrate a little better than my digital SLR lens will how uh, the aperture works, how the depth of field preview works. So what I'm going to do is turn this lens around and this is if you were looking down uh, through the front of the camera you would see the wide open aperture. In this case it is an uh, f3.5. So every time I compose a picture I'm looking at its brightest setting. Now if I set this aperture to f22 okay the moment that I take the picture that aperture will close down just for that moment then open back up just like this. See that? Closes down, opens up for that instant. Well, the depth of field previewer button, which I just mentioned, closes down that aperture for you, all right, so that you can see the real scene. Well, that's about it for this lesson. I hope you've learned something new. Until next time, see you later.